Today we're going to talk about probably one of the most beautifully written books that I have ever read. What It is just lyrical and beautiful and fantastic and one of my favorite books of the year and that is The Starless Sea by Erin Morgenstern. not a book for everyone and I am well aware of that. No book is for everyone but especially this one because it is like I said very lyrical and very fantastical and very just poetic and beautiful and I know that type of prose is not for everyone. I have friends that have loved this and I have friends that have hated this and honestly I'm actually surprised that I fell in the loved it category because typically I want straightforward but this there was something about just the beautifulness of it that just had me hooked from the beginning. We're following our main character Zachary who is a postgrad student studying gaming with an emphasis on storytelling. He is kind of like a introvert, very shy, doesn't really have a whole ton of friends, like a really nice guy, but just introverted. He likes to spend a lot of time in the library and studying and you know, playing video games. And he has like that one friend, Kat, who is this really outgoing character who kind of pushes him outside of his comfort zone. And I absolutely adore her. Like, let's be real. I am that friend. Like, I'm the outgoing friend that pushes the introverted friend like to come out with us. Like, that's just always been me. So I relate to Kat on that and really enjoyed her character. So in following Zachary, we get to see him kind of in his day-to-day -day life. And then he is, you know, at the library, at his school, and he finds this book with no author, no real like print date. And it's just very strangely bound. And he checks it out and come to find out he is in this book. This story of him as a child where he sees this door that he does not open. And it's this door that is like painted on a brick wall and he just feels the urge to open it, but he doesn't and then the door is gone. So like very missed opportunity. And he is so confused as to why his story is in this book book that he found. So he kind of sets off to figure out this mystery. And in figuring out this mystery, we start to discover this magical world that kind of lies beneath the surface that people don't really know about. We're starting to learn about this place called the Starless Sea and this underground magical library that holds all of these stories. So this book is definitely strange. It is not a typical fantasy book with a quest and a plot and a all of this moving the plot forward. It is very just just roll with it kind of book. It's a very just cool let's see where this is going <laughs> because we kind of alternate back and forth between stories from this book and then our story. So we'll get these little short stories in between our actual plot. And at first it's a little jarring because it's not something like I was used to reading, but then as the book progresses, it made more and more sense. Like we actually start to see the threads of these stories start to kind of interweave with each other and then they kind of start to interweave with our modern day story that we're following and our characters there and it's just so beautiful y'all this book is confusing and it's illogical and you have to look at it from a very just 
love of stories type brain. Just throw out the logic, let yourself stay confused, and just enjoy the ride. That is the best way I can describe enjoying this book is just throw out your expectations and just let it be because that is going to be kind of your best bet with this one. It is, like I said, it's beautiful and it's whimsical and it's lyrical. And I think those are like the best kind of buzzwords to describe it. And I mean, I feel like that's what everyone says about it, but it's true. Like I have not read Erin Morgenstern's other book, The Night Circus, but after reading this, I'm like, hell yes, I need to pick it up. Like I need more of this woman's writing. It is beautiful. Even if I finish the book still a little confused, I still gave it five stars because just the feeling that it gave me. And I feel like this is one of those books that you're going to need to reread in order to fully grasp everything. Um, I feel like everything will make more sense on a reread and I am already excited to reread it and tab it and just kind of like explore this again with a fresh set of eyes after knowing kind of what happens, kind of like looking for those little moments and those little interconnected stories that I really, really enjoyed kind of discovering the first time around. In this book, we do get a male male romance, which is really well done. It is not gratuitous. It's not fetishized. It's just a cute romance. So I really appreciated that aspect. Um, the romance though did kind of have its issues with me and I felt like it was a little rushed, a little insta-lovey and I kind of wish we'd have had a little bit more development of the relationship because these two characters just kind of like come together and are this like force to be reckoned with. Like they are drawn to each other and while I love that, I still wish we'd have gotten just, just a little more development of their relationship because it did feel a little insta-lovey to me. Other than that, I really don't have very many complaints. Like I can see people's complaints being how confusing it is and the writing style and this and that, but like that I enjoyed. So that is really a matter of personal taste, I think. One thing is we don't really have a true villain in this story. While we have antagonists that are working against our protagonists, we don't have any villains. We don't have anyone that is evil, that is like bad. Like we have people that are working against each other people that don't see eye to eye, people that, you know, are that will kill for their objective, but you really got to see like their objective makes sense. Like what they think makes sense. Like they're just trying to do what they think is right. The only way they know how and why do we get to say that they're the bad guy? Because really our antagonist could be the protagonist of their own story. Like our protagonist could seem like the antagonist in their story. So it's really cool how that works out. Like you do have people obviously that you are rooting for because you're reading their story. But I really feel like if it were reversed and we were reading from the antagonist side, we would root for them, which I think is a really cool way to write your antagonist, your villains, because I can really understand where they were coming from and why they were doing what they were doing. In summation, this is a book that is not for everyone, but it was definitely for me. If you like just a beautiful, whimsical, kind of confusing book, then pick this up. It has just so much good about it that I can't go into because it would be spoilery. But I just really think that this book needs to be read by more people because it is so beautiful. Like probably one of my favorite books of the year. Like it will definitely be up there. It will definitely be reread. And I mean, that cover is just so pretty, right? Like, I don't know what they did to the US paperback edition, but no, it is ugly. This UK edition, 
beautiful. All right, so thank you guys for hanging out with me. My name is Jessie, and I will see you guys next time. Bye.